So a member sent in their super controller. It all works, but the number pad, there's a bunch of numbers that aren't working on here. My test I ran, it's the three, four, six, eight, nine, star, zero, and pound aren't working. So yeah, a whole bunch of numbers. So I'm gonna take it apart and figure out what's going on. Odds are, when you got certain numbers that aren't working on here, odds are there's a wire loose. If you just had like one row, maybe it could be a diode, but certain numbers like that's a wire. Now the roller controller coming apart is a little bit more difficult. It's got some extra pieces. I'm gonna do the bottom here first. two different screws. One's a metal screw and one's a plastic screw, plastic holding screw. Now we're going to take the back or the side off here. I've only had these apart, apart a couple of times so I'm not able to just fly through it the way I normally would on a controller. I just want to take my time make sure I get every piece right. Now we're going to separate some of these pieces. I know I am missing something. I'm just trying to take my time to figure out exactly where I'm missing. I believe there's a pop somewhere in here. I think it's this is up here at the top where the plastic pops apart. Okay, so that pops off there, my bad. That pops off the front. It gives you access to the other screws I need to get to now. Right there. I thought it might pop off the back there, but I wasn't about to force anything, so let's try that now. This side. It's hard to see down in that hole there, but it's there. I always thought these super controllers were very clunky in size, the way they were designed. There we go. That does that. So that takes that up there. What we're getting to is up here. So I'm going to try and pull apart without pulling everything apart. So we open that up, take out the four buttons here, unhook that. them out of the way. Now take that out. It's like a phaser. Pew, 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 pew. Now, let's see what we got in here. It's almost like maybe they got bent in. We shall see. I think I can go now with the, um, what's you need this? Pop that up there. That out of the way. So we get the wire out of the way. We're slowly taking it down to its component parts. I believe I'm gonna have to pull this off to get that out there because they're all one piece. Do I think that's gonna stay on there? So let's just see. Yeah, this is built. I mean, it's. I don't like the controller itself, the way how big it is and bulky and stuff. But it is built a lot better than the other controllers. 
The joystick is beautiful on it, but it's just so big and cumbersome. Okay, so that's good there. And then I believe this center one we're going to leave in there because it will hold it all together. I believe we shall see. Maybe not. If you notice, I'm keeping the screws in separate places up here. Just so they don't mix them up because Clico like to use various screws for different pieces. And if you mix them up, you might end up denting things or having a screw push through the plastic or something. Now does that let this come off? It does. Like so. And say so we have fascinating is that we have an eight direction on here, not a four. So these are actually di real directions now. So I want that out of the way. Just take this out just so it doesn't fall out. And that's good there. I'm not worried about that. If I wanted to take it apart, it looks like I would have to unscrew the ball off the top. But I'm not worried about that. Now we're going to go to here. Take these off. Now there is always the possibility that a diode is bad, but odds are no. Because there's too many of them that are having issues for it to be a diode. Over here, one of these diodes. Because what these diodes do is it lets multiple controls go on a fewer lines. And they don't cross over and short out or cause you to think that you're pushing one when you're not. Well, I can tell you right now... This is filthy as all get out in there, so maybe that's my issue right there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of tarnish in there. If that's going to be the problem, it's another story, but there's a lot in there. And there's a lot of dirt in here, too. But let's just get that out of the way. I'm going to push these buttons back up a little. They seem to have been shoved in like... They were stomped on or pressed on real hard. So I'm going to just push them back up so that they raise up. Doesn't matter. Probably not. But Now this right here. I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol. Spray a little bit on there. Get a semi-clean rag and just wipe it down. Make sure there's nothing built up on it. The blue is from Windex. It's almost like they got food coloring in that stuff to make it turn blue like that. So that's clean. Now this right here, we do the same too. I can see different discolorations and stuff on here. I don't know if you can, but I can. So I'm going to clean that first and see if that fixes the issue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble this just to the wire to here. And I'm going to test it real quick and see what we got. And the way I'm going to test it is you can take these and you can just take a screwdriver, anything metal, and just go across. And when you do that, it'll tell the computer that you're pressing the button and you can see if it works. And that way you can eliminate anything on here. If it still doesn't work, then okay, it's on here. If it does work, then it was something here. And I can just set that on top and do the same too. Which I may actually do. Give that a shot. So I'm going to pause this. I'm not pointing this at the Atom right now. The Atom is running a program that you just plug in. You test these. So I'm going to pause this. Alright, so what I did is I plugged it into the Atom. And then I took my little screwdriver and I just went across on each one and what that does is that just acts like you're making a contact and every button worked fine so then I took this and laid this on here and did the same and every button worked fine so we know physically everything's good now we just got to figure out what's going on with it in the con 
up in the button pad somewhere. Maybe it was something was stopping it. Maybe this thing got out of whack. It moved, whatever. So what we're going to do is going to do partial assembly. I'm going to put this back together. Then I'm going to take it over there and I'm going to try it again. Yeah, let's put that on the right way. Let me take the wire off. The wire gets in the way here. makes it harder to work with. So what I do is, um, I've, instead of, I'm not going to totally reassemble this thing completely, then test it and find out that it didn't work. I'm going to assemble this much of it. Make sure that's in the right place. Everything is lined up perfectly. Then I'm going to put this in here. Reassemble. Reassemble this much of it. And then I'll test it. If it works, then we're good. If not, then something about the assembly just caused it not to work anymore. And we've got to figure out what that is. Or maybe it's the buttons that are pushing the actual keys or are making good contact for one reason or another. But I think we just fixed it by cleaning it out. I think it just had a bunch of buildup and gunk in there that I saw when I opened it up. They get like that. Especially if you have, you saw the little rubber contacts, those rubber contacts lean up against the metal. And they're like carbon, rubber with carbon impregnation on it, or carbon impregnated into the rubber that causes, that'll let you carry a current across from one to the other. And that, so when you press it down, it presses the button. And if the keys are pressed up against it for a long time, like it's in storage and something's leaning it against it for a long time, it can leave residue behind that just stops it from making contact again. It's like if you had a computer keyboard and a com an older computer keyboard that has that rubber um, contacts or even even just mylar. And it just sits there with something sitting on the keys for so long and then when you go to use it, some of the keys don't work anymore. And you got to take it apart and clean it. So we're going to give this a shot now. And I'll pause this and we'll see what happens. All right, after fully assembled, every key works except for the three. The three is not working. So we know that something about this assembly caused it not to work. Let's find out what happened. I'm going to just take it apart again. I'm going to leave the wire on this time because I'm getting close to having it fixed. So I'm going to just take this apart a little bit and see, one, if there's anything right in there, like a stray piece of hair or something, definitely not for my head, but you never know. I have five cats, not here, but at home. And I've learned that hair can get everywhere. So let's just see. Not seeing anything in there. I'm wondering if that needs a little extra cleaning. Well, what I can do too is, actually, you know what? See, that's the number three right there. That's the one that's not working. I'm going to rotate this. Instead of it being number three up there, I'm going to make it, I'm going to put it down here to the, I believe that's the number sign. I'm going to see if number three now starts working and the number sign stops working. If so, then we know that pad's got an issue. Sometimes, and let me just, I'm going to do one more clean on it too while I'm here. Sometimes, if you have these little rubber keys like this, rubber pads. If you look at them, you can see that they're indentations on them where they were leaning up against the other, the, up against here. And you can see that pattern's been and implanted on here. And sometimes if you turn them, it helps bring the little ridges in reverse so the ridges are now crossing instead of going in. And you get a better contact. So we're gonna try that now. I'm just gonna put that in there that way and see if we get any better Get in here. Oh, this side. We should do it the right way. There. Now it's just. I can't test it without screwing these in because it's just going to flop around and it would give me false results, as if some of the keys weren't working when they could be. It's just that they're moving around on me. So I'm going to put these four screws back in. I probably could get away with just two of them, but I'm going to put all four in. Yeah, the, the ColecoVision controllers are pretty interesting in their design and how they use these diodes. What a diode does is it controls current flow. The current can only go one direction. So you can have 
I believe the ColecoVision has two lines, power lines coming in, and it uses these diodes and those two power lines to encode buttons on, I believe, four going back out. Four, six, seven, yeah, yep, four going back out. Even more so because we've got a spinner in here, which is fascinating. Look, I mean, this is kind of, I've never really looked at the spinner much, but you see it's just a little magnet here, and there's little sensors in there, so... As the spinner goes past the magnet, it must draw a little current, and it says, oh, you spun. Oh, that's basically super simple. All right, so I'm going to go with this one a shot. And see All right, so doing that, now made these two not work, which means I moved the number three down to here, and I guess the number one is flaky. So now we got those two buttons down here not working. We're getting better. We do know it's now, we have narrowed it down to that it is, or it should be, the little rubber there. There's things we can do to make it work better. I'm going to try a couple things here first. Okay. First thing, I just want to make sure this is not is there anything on it. It's still nice and clean. I'm just going to hit this again. With the alcohol. Now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to take will these turn okay I was trying to see if they would rotate in there but they're pretty stuck good they don't appear to want to rotate any they're like glued on which makes sense so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take Some very high 4,000 grit sandpaper here. I'm going to take that and I'm just going to rub the end of that. Just to rough it up a little so I can get a good just roughed it up a little. Do the same on this one here. Just remove any kind of gunk on it. And now we're going to go back on here. I'll make sure I put those two back down in the same place again. Now if this doesn't work, then my next option may be to try to build up the back of the keys a little so that it presses harder. Because the key may be bottoming out before the rubber's making contact. Or before the rubber's making good contact. So we might be able to build up the key a little bit with just a little bit, I'll show you a little trick like MacGyver it. Get in the hole, get in there. Sometimes mag magnetic screwdrivers are great, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they keep pulling a screw back out when you're tightening it up. I'm believing that using sandpaper on it should make a difference. I should have got it. So let's go give this a shot. All right, so they are working now, but you really have to push down pretty hard to get to get the contact. So I'm going to do that little thing that I said to my, I'm going to MacGyver it, and I'll show you how that works. It's not something bad, and it's totally um, reversible. And once you see it, it makes all kinds of sense. So what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to remove the keypad one more time. Should be the last time we're doing this. Put this off to the side over here. Drop cap. Now I want to make sure I keep this right. So that it goes back on the same way. Now these are the keys that are not making good enough contact for. What I want to do is I want to make them a little taller. And to do that, I'm going to take just a little bit of tape. A little bit of masking tape. 
Not much, just a little bit of masking tape like this, and I'm going to make a little sticky pad. See? Just a little sticky pad, not much. Pretty thin. Just enough. I'm going to put it right there. I could put it on the other side of that too if I wanted, but it will stick as soon as I get it on there. Actually, go right here. I don't want it to be on the plastic. I want it to sit flat right there. Okay, right there. And then I'm going to do another one for the other side. I believe these things have been bent so much that the plastic may be getting a little weak. And because it is, the plastic that holds the keys, I think the whole key is flexing and not the, the whole control is flexing, not just the key. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a little bit of stuff on here to make it stick up a little more. See how I did that? Can you see that? It's just there. Now I'm going to put this one back in here. Like so. Get in the little slots. There we go. There. Now I'm going to put that on here and make sure I don't have too much. If I have too much on there, then it will just like force that key in all the time. We don't want that. So let's just see. Now, it's quite possible I could do things like warm up the plastic or use some acetone to soften the plastic and bend the key a little better and stuff like that. But I don't want to do anything that possibly damage anything. So this is, like I said, it's a totally non-destructive way of doing it. And it's, it's not a visible way, and you'll never even know it's there. And this, it's not as if this is a keyboard that you're typing on all the time. So it's not like your computer keyboard that has a piece of tape inside of it, and you're like, this key feels weird compared to the rest. And how often do you push the keypads on these super controllers? Very rarely. When you do, you notice it's tapping them once. Okay, so one more shot. And then we're going to go over there. We're going to give it one more test run. And then we'll probably come back and tell you, hey, works great. All right. All right, so that did work. But I'm not happy with it. It feels too stiff. So I'm going to see what else I can do here. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to see if I can do anything else to it. One more shot at correcting those two keys. But obviously we know what's causing it now, so let's just see what we can do with it. And then we'll put this thing all back together when we get done. Yeah, I'm not happy about those. Come on out. They work, but they just don't feel right. It's like they push down too far in here. Why is that? See, I'm going to show you. We're not getting a good enough connection there. I wonder if I can get a better... Is this thing seating correctly? Is there something stopping it from seating? Let's just see something here. If that's in there, are we getting a good... I'm checking to see if that the PCB is, la is laying flat on the plastic container or holder and it's not completely flat on this side here. Something is stopping it from going flat. Is it the uh, solder on that thing? A little bit of solder right here. This little wire sticking out. Right there. It is catching on something. Get rid of you. Let's get rid of you on this end too, just on the off chance that you're in the way. I just got rid of the extra wire. It didn't affect anything. Just the extra wire that was sticking through the hole. Let's see, does that sit flat or no? It 
seems to sit a little flatter now. We'll give it one more shot. Let's do it again. Okay. Stop rocking. What a magnet. All right, so that last little trick fixed it. So it appears that it wasn't the key not getting contact as much as the wire right here, the pieces of excess wire, were snagging on the plastic and not letting it seat all the way in. So now we can put it back together. Yay! Okay, step by step. First off, the spinner in here, and you don't need a screw. And then we're gonna put you in here. You're going up. Flip you over here, bend it in together like so, okay now we have these screws right here where all the, so the those, can I use my, will this fit on it? Where's the head to go? Oh yeah. I can use the high tech thing to put it back together. Get down in the hole there, spinner. You don't want to torque it in. It's not like we're fixing a car or anything. With how complicated this system is, after I get these screws in here, I'm going to plug her back in and I'm going to test to make sure that the controller's still working, the spinner's working, and the keypad is working. So we'll give that a shot now. Make sure everything is. Not right there. Something don't feel right there. Ah, uh, we got a spring out of alignment in there. far apart I gotta take this to get it down to where I want it. We probably gotta get all the pieces off. There's a spring inside of here and it's not lined up correctly. So it's sticking and we need to fix that. I probably can just leave the screws in. Come on, out. Okay, now this one, I can just leave tightened in because this just holds this together in here. What's going on here? We got something spinning around. We don't like that. Stay there. Let's go by hand here.
Okay, now the spring has to be pushed up in there like so and held up like that. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the spring up there. Now I want to put this in here, fold you over like so, and then hold that together there. So let's see what happened. I was not totally stupid. Just get one of them started. Now the control is moving the way it should be. It always seemed like it had more movement than it does, but I guess it's... I've been playing with an arcade joystick recently, and that one has so much movement that I'm looking at this and expecting the same amount of movement, but no. A little movement, just like the regular Conrico controller has. Okay, now let's make sure the spinner is in this hole. And then we put these last few in here. The reason I'm just tapping the button like that, I just don't want to drive this in. I'm not torquing it in. I just want to just make it go in slow. I don't want to break nothing. So I'm just going to slowly. Not enough pressing down much on it so that it would just lift off of it. So now I'm going to go give her a shot and see what we got now. All right, so that has worked fine. Now we're going to reassemble this some more. And to do so, I believe this was the first side. This one, this one in here, like so. Oh, no, no, wire out. Come on, wire. This goes in there like that. And then we have this right here plugs into here then they go over top those little it's there okay, let's get all these wires out of the way let's get all the wires down where they belong the wire goes this wire goes was it behind it I believe it just went like that I mean or did it go behind it it might have went behind it let me just Give it a shot. Let's go put it behind it and see what happens. I don't believe it went behind it. No, it's on top. Okay. So that goes there. This one looped that way. I can see that much right now. Or no, it didn't. I know you came over here. So let's see where you go. You do go behind it. Okay, we're going to put that you back over here then. Like this. There, like that. That right there. That right there. Was it that way? Yeah, that that way right there. Okay, that way. And what I'm doing is I'm looking to see if there's a guide in here or that I need to be concerned about leaning against it. But it looks like that's the way it goes here. And that goes back there, and probably this one right that way. And then these right here. Now I would say this comes up here, like such. And I would say this probably goes behind that. No, it doesn't go behind it. Like such, right there. That right there, but this, I don't like that. But that is where it goes, okay. It goes there. Now we're going to set this on top. I don't know if I'm giving you a good camera angle here, but I just want to make sure I got the wire in correctly. I don't want it sticking out, obviously. That's good. That's good. That's good. Just make sure we're good for a reassembly. Okay. Now we know.
That's the metal one right there. That goes there. So this is right here. This one right here. One up front and we was this side. Still good, not catching anything. Now these, both the same size, they go here. nice and tightly. Like, it's like everything clay goes out. It makes a lot of creaking, creaking, creaking noises. Now this goes in here, locks in place. Then down here, this goes over that. And the, me and the metal threaded one, that one right there goes in the front. And the plastic threaded one goes in the back, like so. I'm pretty sure you didn't see any of that. But, way it goes. It's just meant to get this into the hole. Get in the hole. I completely missed the hole on that one. Come on out, 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 out. Thank you. catching on that. Hmm. Do we have something out of the way? It then one screw up in the front's not catching. Let's try this again. We have to squeeze it together to get that thing to line up in the threads. I'm off camera here squeezing it while I'm tightening it. Yes, you had, I had to squeeze it to get the threads to line up. And then, then do the back piece. All right. Get back here. Yeah, it's a little, I think I used chintzy, clunky. Cumbersome, I'm not sure what word exactly fits everything, but there is a lot to it, and putting them together is a pain in the neck, but it's back together. So I'm going to plug her in one more time and give it another shot. All right, so she works fine now. Everything works on her good. I'm just going to give her a nice spray down. A little bit of the old blue goo, Windex, and just wipe it down. And then we'll be sending it back to its owner. So this is another member benefit for the Retro Gamers Club. If you have any computer or any game equipment, even computer equipment sometimes, depends on what it is, that's not working well, let me know. And if it's something that I can fix, and most of the time I can fix most things, it's just certain things like CD drives and things like that, I don't want to touch hard drives. But the mechanical things, keyboards, computers, RAM, display, things like that, fix those. So just let me know, and what we do is you just ship it to me. When I get it, I'll take it apart, and I'll see what's wrong with it. And if I can just fix it, I will. If it needs any parts, I'll let you know, and we'll, I'll tell you what the price will be for those parts. But if it doesn't need any parts, if it just needs some maintenance, some cleaning, some readjusting, maybe hit it with a soldering iron, something like that. You just pay shipping to and from. No other charge. Have a great day.